hello and welcome to another episode of the Mark Medley Show. And this particular episode, I've actually recorded it on two other podcast platforms as well as written it in a blog post and will probably even share it as an article on LinkedIn because it's that significant and that important. If you don't know who you're listening to, this is Mark Medley and this is the Mark Medley Show and today's episode is entitled or titled, We as Adult Children must show compassion and patience with our senior adult parents. Now this episode is particularly poignant or particularly pertinent or pertains more so to those of us who may be middle-aged and still have parents who are alive. In other words, those of us who are in our 40s or 50s or 60s and our parents are in their 70s, 80s, 90s, close to 100. And even though it's targeted toward that group, the message even applies to those who are in their teens and 20s whose parents may be in their 40s, 50s, 60s. It applies either way, but the the story moved me so much that I felt it was a message that was important enough to share across all of my platforms and on all of my social media because I need someone besides me to read it or to hear it and to think, especially if you have an aging parent. And the story comes from a book that I was reading, or am reading, I'm about finished with it, I'm 80% through it. Another couple of chapters or so I'll be done with the book, and it has been a wonderful read throughout with some great messaging. And the book is titled, The Monk Who Sold His Ferrari, again, The Monk Who Sold His Ferrari. And the author of the book is Robin Sharma, S-H-A-R-M-A. And it's subtitled, A Remarkable Story About Living Your Dreams. Again, the title of the book, and I do encourage you to download a copy or purchase a copy. It's an older book, but the message is still relevant. And again, the author is Robin Sharma, S-H-A-R-M-A. The title of the book is The Monk Who Sold His Ferrari, A Remarkable Story About Living Your Dreams. Now, this is the story that moved me, for the most part, to tears. And hopefully, as I try to read through it here again, that I don't break down and begin tearing up or start crying myself. Because for me, it was that moving. Because I could relate to it because my mom is 82 years old. And some of the descriptives here in the story are so relevant and and fit her and 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 jumped out and leaped out at me and even though I I I remember so much of, of her and her youth now she's a senior saint a senior citizen an elder and 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 much of what's described in this story I I could relate to and thankfully I didn't resort to what the particular parents in this story resorted to, but at the same time, I could see how it could happen. And it is my hope that as I share this with you, that I prevent that from happening with you. That we could somehow nip it in the bud before it even gets there. That we could somehow curtail it. That we could be proactive instead of reactive, that after listening to this story, you may have to think and reflect and say, I don't want to go there. Don't let that happen with me and my mom or me and my dad or me and my mom and dad or grandparents or whomever. So take a listen and listen very intently and closely as I share this story with you from the book, The Monk Who Sold His Ferrari. Now, this is the story. Going into quotation now. One evening, just before dinner, 
a matter of fact, let me go back to the beginning of the story. I was getting ready to start in the middle. There was once a feeble old woman whose loving husband died. So she went to live with her son and his wife and daughter. Every day the woman's sight grew worse and her hearing grew worse. Some days her hands trembled so badly the peas on her plate rolled onto the floor and the soup ran from her cup. Her son and his wife couldn't help but be annoyed at the mess she made and one day they said enough was enough. So they set up a little table for the old woman in a corner next to the broom closet and made her eat all of her meals there alone. She would look at them at meal times with tear-filled eyes from across the room. But they hardly talked to her while they ate except to scold her for dropping a spoon or a fork. One evening just before dinner the little daughter was sitting on the floor playing with her building blocks. What are you making? her father asked earnestly. I'm building a little table for you and mother, she said, so you can eat by yourselves in the corner someday when I get big. The father and mother were moved to silence for what seemed like an eternity. Then they started to weep. In that instant, they became aware of the nature of their actions and the sadness they had caused. That night, they led the old woman back to her rightful place at their big dinner table, and from that day on, she ate all her meals with them. And when a little morsel of food fell off the table or a fork strayed onto the floor, nobody seemed to mind anymore. In this story, the parents were not bad people. They simply needed the spark of awareness to light their candle of compassion. Compassion and daily acts of kindness make life far richer. It is my hope that after you listen to that story, that it will impact you the same way that it impacted me, that you will reflect as you deal with senior citizens or your parents or your grandparents, your uncles, your aunts, your cousins, your godparents, whomever it may be, who may be struggling with health challenges and are not like they used to be when they were young. Yes, it requires patience, just like it requires patience or the patience when they were dealing with us as babies. Again, I challenge you. Reflect on that story. Think about even what was being taught in terms of how the little daughter now took on the thinking of her parents and said, I'm building a table for you and mom for you two to eat there alone when I get grown. Wow, something to think about. You can find me by visiting my website at markamedley.com that's M-A-R-C-A-M-E-D-L-E-Y dot com you can hear me on Saturday mornings live from 6 to 9 a.m. on gobrave.org that's G-O-B-R-A-V-E dot org as I host my radio show three hours each Saturday morning from 6 to 9 a.m. Eastern Time again 88.7 FM radio in northern New Jersey and web streamed around the world on gobrave.org if you go to my website it is the portal we'll get you to all of my social media sites as well as my podcast my blog radio show all of it so just visit m-a-r-c-a-m-e-d-l-e-y dot com 